Game Boy Color games. Normally, these would run on a Game Boy Color. If you tried to run them on an original Game Boy, there's a little notch that has some plastic. Whenever you try to power on the device, it collides with the cartridge itself because the notch is not in the cartridge. Old Game Boy games had a cutout inside of the cartridge so that the notch could fit inside of there. However, Nintendo created the Game Boy Pocket, which played only Game Boy games and not Game Boy Color games. However, it didn't have this notch mechanism. So I thought, what would happen if we took a Game Boy Color game and tried to play it on a Game Boy Pocket? So let's take a look. So what we have here is a Game Boy Pocket, and we're going to go through a series of Game Boy Color games just to check them out. What you'll notice is each one of the Game Boy Color games has their own unique screen to let the player know the game only operates on a Game Boy Color and not on the Game Boy that they're playing on. Now this is also something that you can do inside of an emulator in order to see what it behaves like, especially useful for if you're developing your own Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, well Game Boy Color I suppose. So if you go to your emulation setup you can usually set it to what you want it to be, the emulation type, and this is going to be for Game Boy. So we're going to try to load this in and you'll see that it has the message here showing you that you can't play this on a Game Boy. So we'll see how we can do it here instead of Same Boy, uh, which is a much more popular one. You can just go to emulation options and change this to just Game Boy. And in that way, we'll see the error message. I don't know what to call this. The go play, go buy a Game Boy Color message. So something you may be wondering is how do you, how do they know which Game Boy that you're playing on to show that message? And I did a little bit of uh, searching around in Ghidra, and we'll take a look. Okay, so the Game Boy you can jump to 150, and that's where the Game Boy execution starts. Now what you'll notice here is that A is immediately, the very first line of code, A is immediately being set into this particular address here. It's memory, so we can we can rename this, call it Game Boy Type. And then we can show the references and it's writing on line 150 and it's reading over here inside of this unknown function. And you'll notice here that it's looking for the value 11. It's comparing with the hex value 11. And that value is actually determining if it is Game Boy Color. So when the Game Boy starts up, A contains the value that tells us what kind of Game Boy this is. If it is an old Game Boy, it would be the value 1. If it is a Game Boy Color, it's going to be the value 17, or 11 as you see in hex here. And that's what's going to actually call the code and determine whether we need to present the error message or continue on with the game. And each game technically can do whatever they want in this way. You may have saw that the Pokemon, the Japanese Pokemon game, showed some copyright information before it jumped to the error screen. So each game could technically run some Game Boy code or even run a mini game or whatever it wanted to do to present that error message. So those explorers among you may be wondering what happens if we try to trick the Game Boy into running the game anyways. So let's first open it up and see what it looks like when we run it as a Game Boy Color game.
Okay, so that's how it behaves whenever it is ran normally. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our knowledge of how it is run from what we learned from Gidra between the 1 and the 17 value and force it to be 17. Okay, so I've forced the state of the Game Boy to be running the cartridge as a Game Boy and not Game Boy Color anymore, so we see this. Now, we know that our program starts at 150 here, and this is where we load A into that uh, memory. So we're just going to put a breakpoint here on the line after. We're going to reset and run, so now we're stuck here, and we're going to find that memory address. So looking at the memory address, we have 0E01, so we're just going to type in, we're going to leave it the way it is, we're going to say 0E, and then instead of 01, we're going to say 11 to make it think that it's a Game Boy Color. And we're going to continue playing it and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, you can kind of make out what was happening in the Game Boy Color screen inside of the Game Boy screen, but if you just saw the Game Boy screen and not the Game Boy Color, you'd have no idea really what's going on. But you can kind of make out some of the shapes and some of the flatter colors come through, uh, kind of almost like a negative. So that's how, that's what happens whenever you run it, it's just because the way that the Game Boy loads in graphics is a little different than the Game Boy Color since obviously there's color in one and only four tones, uh, four shades of green or gray or black, whatever you want to call it, in the Game Boy. And so yeah, that's what happens. It actually plays uh, and uh, you get sound and all that kind of stuff. It just looks crazy. Now I know this is a little bit of a short video, but it's kind of cool to, to look at how this operates, and if you're going to make a Game Boy Color game, you should consider how it will behave when you put it in something like the Game Boy Pocket. And you should, I, I recommend making a little mini game or something kind of fun like that as your air screen. But you could just present an image like pretty much every uh, Game Boy Color game that we've presented in the video. I did record myself going through Ghidra and editing and testing and changing labels and trying to find where all the pixels were for or all the tiles were for the air screen inside of this game and it was a lot of fun it was really long and I thought well this is going to to be a little bit crazy to put up and talk over because I'm all over the place in that one but uh, I boiled it down here and as I'm playing I'm probably playing a sped up version of all the stuff I was doing in the background at this moment but anyways, thanks so much for watching, and if you have any questions or any suggestions on uh, things that I can look through, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.